All right, let's get right into it. Your assigned problems may or may not have different randomized values. For best results, attempt the assignment on your own before watching these solutions. Students are encouraged to frequently pause the video to work out steps on their own before proceeding with the solutions. And here's the list of topics to be covered in this video. In problem one, we're going to sketch a graph of f of x equals sine x, pretending that we have not seen this graph on our calculators in our textbooks or whatever. Now, as the angle x goes around the unit circle, and since x is being plugged into sine, we should consider it to be an angle. So here's the unit circle with the initial direction of x pointing straight right as an angle of zero. We're going to rotate in the counterclockwise direction, and as we do, the sine of x is the height of the point on the unit circle that this arrow is pointing towards. So initially, at an angle of zero, we're pointing straight right. The point on the unit circle has height zero, so the sine of zero is zero. We put zero comma zero into our plot. Now let's rotate through the first quadrant and pay attention to the height of the point on the circle. It goes up, 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 slows down until it reaches a maximum of one. This is an angle of pi over two. The sine of pi over two is one, so we put pi over two comma one into our plot. As we keep rotating, the height of the point comes back down to zero. By the time we reach an angle of pi, the sine of pi is zero. We put pi comma zero into our plot. Now, as we keep rotating, we go down, down, slowing until we reach our minimum of minus one. This is at an angle of three pi over two. The sine of three pi over two is negative one. Let's put three pi over two comma negative one into our plot. Now, if we keep rotating, the height of the point on the unit circle at the end of that arrow will come back up to zero. So we'll put two pi comma zero into our plot. Now, the height of the point went up fairly quickly, slowed down, came down, sped up till it slowed down towards the bottom and came back up. And if you sort of fill in the blanks, we'll get a curve somewhat like this. But now what happens, the shape will repeat itself. If we keep rotating, we're duplicating the same angles we've seen before. So the shape will simply repeat itself forever in this direction, but also backwards. Problem two, let's sketch a graph of f of x equals cosine x. Now the basic shape of the cosine curve is the same as that of the sine curve. So here was sine x. However, the cosine curve starts at the maximum. We're tracking a horizontal coordinate and on the unit circle all the way to the right is the maximum horizontal coordinate. So we want this curve to start at its maximum, not at the median. So we simply slide it over here, starting at its maximum height of one. And here is a plot of f of x equals cos x. For problem three, which of the following is a graph of f of x equals two times the sine of x? We have four options here. Now the sine curve by default reaches a maximum and minimum of plus and minus one respectively, but this is being multiplied by two. Whatever the sine of x is, it's being multiplied by two. So we expect the maximum value to be two and the minimum to be minus two. Can't be this, the max and min are one and minus one respectively. Can't be this, the max and min are plus or minus four. Both of the remaining curves has a max and min of plus or minus two. But the sine of zero is zero. We saw that in, back in problem one. So when x is equal to zero, we get two times the sine of zero, two times zero, that's just zero. So we're looking for an intercept of zero and this graph here has an intercept of two. So the only remaining option is the one in the bottom right. In problem four, which of the following is a graph of y equals negative three cos x? We have four options again. So the cosine curve by default reaches a max and min of plus or minus one. This is being multiplied by minus three. So when the original cosine reaches its maximum of one, this reaches its minimum of minus three. And similarly, when the cosine curve reaches its minimum of minus one, this will reach its maximum of three, but still the max and min are plus or minus three. This curve here goes up and down to plus or minus four, that's too big. All the remaining curves, however, go between plus or minus three. The cosine of zero is one, so f of zero, negative three times one, would be minus three, so we're looking for an intercept of negative three. This one has an intercept of zero, this one has an intercept of positive three. Those can't be correct. The only remaining option is the one in the upper left. For problem five, we're given a graph. We're going to determine the amplitude, midline, and period of the function, and I usually refer to the midline as the median value. So these are the things we need to find. Now to find the amplitude, we notice that there is a maximum value of three here and a minimum value of negative seven here. So the distance between these two things is 10. What's half the distance from the max to the min? That would be five, that's our amplitude. Next, what's the period? We find one occurrence of a maximum appears to be here at x equals a half. 
where's the next maximum? Not just any other maximum, but specifically the next one appears to be here at about 2.5 or 5 halves. What's the distance from 1 half to 5 halves? Exactly 2, so that is how long it takes the curve to repeat itself, 2. And finally, let's find the midline or median. All we have to do is average the maximum and minimum values and we end up with minus 2. Next, let's sketch a graph of the function f of x equals negative 3 times the sine of pi over 2x minus 2. The minus 2 gives us our median value. The absolute value of minus 3 out in front, or 3, is our amplitude. So from our median of minus 2, if we go up 3 units, there's our maximum of 1. And from the median, if we go down 3 units, there's our minimum of minus 5. 2 pi divided by this, pi over 2, represents our period. That's 4. There's no horizontal shift present, so starting at x equals 0, we have a period of 4, so every 4 units we're going to repeat. So now we have a bunch of guidelines representing periods of the function, but also the maximum, median, and minimum values it will take. I then like to mark off quarter periods within one of these periods. So the period was length 4, a quarter of that is 1. So within one of our periods, I'm going to mark off segments of width 1. These represent a single quadrant worth of movement. We have a negative number times a sine function. The sine function begins at its median and then goes up, but since we have this vertical reflection, we're going to start at our median and go down. So let's fill in one period, starting at x equals 0 and the median value of minus 2. In the first quadrant, we go down to the minimum, then in the next quadrant, come back to the median, then go up to the maximum, and then finally back down to the median. So here is one period of the function. All we need to do is take this shape and repeat it as needed. There we have it. In problem 7, let's sketch a graph of the function 2 times the cosine of 1 half x. There is a median of 0, there's nothing hanging off to the right. We have an amplitude of 2, so the maximum will be at 2 and the minimum will be at minus 2. The period computes out to 4 pi. There's no horizontal shift, so we mark off some guidelines representing full periods of the function. Now the period is 4 pi, which means a quarter period is pi, so I mark off some segments of width pi. We have a positive cosine shape that starts at its maximum. So we fill in one period, we head to our median, down to our minimum, back to our median, back up to our maximum. The shape looks like this, and we repeat it as necessary to complete the diagram. Next, let's find a function either of the form a sine kx plus c or a cos kx plus c that produce the given graph. Now, the wording of the problem find a function suggests that there might be more than one. Since our given forms have no horizontal shift and we therefore need the shape to begin at x equals zero, if we put in the typical restriction that the scaling factor k inside the parenthesis must be positive, there is actually a unique solution. So our curve begins at the median and is going up. That's a positive sine shape. So that tells us that a is positive and we will construct something of the form a sine kx plus c. The maximum height is 2, the minimum height is minus 2. The median will be the average of those, which is 0. So we set c equal to 0. The amplitude is the distance from the median to either max or min, and either one of those will compute out to 2. So the amplitude is 2. That's the absolute value of a. But we already knew a was positive, so what's a positive number whose absolute value is 2? Just 2. So we have 2 sine something times x plus 0. k is related to the period, so let's try to find the period. Finding points on this graph that are easily identifiable is kind of tricky. These were randomly generated, and the number that was picked here for the period isn't doing us a whole lot of favors. Now, the origin is pretty straightforward. However, the next one that looks most obvious is this median, which is a quarter of the way between 2 pi and 3 pi. So a quarter pi in addition to 2 pi is 9 pi over 4. So we're looking for a function of the form 2 times the sine of kx plus 0, and we've identified that 9 pi over 4 is the distance between two consecutive medians. That's not the period, that's half the period. So 9 pi over 2 is the period. So 2 pi over k should produce the result 9 pi over 2. Solving for k, we get 4 ninths. 
So y is 2 times the sine of 4 ninths x plus 0. In problem 9, we're going to find a function, either a scalar multiple of sine or cosine, that matches the given graph. We have no horizontal shift and we're starting at our maximum. That's a positive cosine curve. So the maximum height of 4 and the minimum height of minus 8 tell us that their average will be the median. The average of those two values is negative 2. The distance from the median to either one is the amplitude. That works out to be 6. So we're looking for a positive number times cosine, and that amplitude must now be 6. So we're looking for 6 times the cosine of some kx minus 2, the minus 2 being our median. To find k, we need to find the period. So let's find two consecutive maximum values. I picked these at 0 and 10. So the period is 10, meaning 2 pi over k is 10. We solve for k, and it's pi over 5. And this gives us that y must be 6 times the cosine of pi over 5x minus 2. And up to the restriction that k has to be positive, this is the only solution. Problem 10. On the interval from 0 to 2 pi, find which angles are not in the domain of tangent of theta. So tan theta is sine theta over cos theta. Sine theta and cos theta have domain all real values, which means the only restriction to the domain of tangent is that we can't divide by 0. So really the problem is asking, for which theta from 0 to 2 pi is the cosine of theta 0? Let's draw our standard unit circle. Cos theta is the x-coordinate of the point of intersection, so let's draw the line x equals 0. What angles give us cosines of 0? In other words, what angles point on the unit circle to where this vertical line intersects the circle? There's two points of intersection at 0, 1, and 0, minus 1. The first one corresponds to an angle of pi over 2, and the latter to an angle of minus pi over 2. However, we were instructed that our answers should be in the interval from 0 to 2 pi. So instead of minus pi over 2, let's replace it with the coterminal angle 3 pi over 2. So the angles from 0 to 2 pi not in the domain of tangent are pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Problem 11. What's the graph of f of x equals 4 times the tangent of pi over 4x? We have two options here. Now, both graphs have the correct intercept of 0, 0, and they also have the correct period of 4. However, if x increases from 0 to a small positive angle, sine and cosine will both be positive, meaning tangent will be positive for small positive values of x. So it's not this one. Uh, looking at this graph, when x is slightly positive, we have the curve reaching negative values. That's not what we would expect. Problem 12, which is the graph of f of x equals 3 times the tangent of pi over 4x minus 2? And again, we have two options here. Both graphs have the correct intercept of 0 minus 2, and they both have the correct period of 4. For small positive x's, however, tangent is positive. It is increasing from its 0 when x is 0. So if x becomes slightly positive, we're expecting this graph to go up a little bit, which is not this one. Therefore, it's the graph on the right. 